if you were looking forward to it. I'm uh, sorry to say you won't be able to see it this time, but let's get things moving now with the Dark Destroyer himself, Nigel Benn, against Mbayo Wa Mbayo. Now, wherever Nigel goes, he leaves a trail of destruction, I'm sure you've noticed, but he certainly puts bottoms on seats. And that was the case in Glasgow's Kelvin Hall tonight. The place is bulging with spectators as the Dark Destroyer goes for his 22nd straight win. He's not famous for his charity, but he's agreed to donate part of his purse to the Lockerbie Disaster Appeal, and so has his opponent, Mbayo Wa Mbayo. Let's call him Bob, his friends do. The African middleweight's durable, even if not possessed with a big punch. 24 contests, eight defeats, but no one stopped him yet. The commentators, Jim Watt and Reg Gutteridge. A little bit of confusion there. They, they didn't know whether the referee wanted to have a word with them or not. Uh, so uh, Brian Lynch stayed there to pop the gun shield in. And now, don't blink. If you know what it is with Nigel Ben, it could all be over. And he certainly endeared himself to the, the Scots coming in with the, the Royal Stuart clan there. So what do we know about Mumbuayo? Very little. Defeated James Cook of Coventry, which is a good result. And he's fought a world champion in Carlos Santos. Didn't win. And now he's taking the liberty of hitting Ben. Well, that's something. Good beard on him. At one time, they were banned because they were considered extra protection. But if they're now normally worn, apparently, they're, they're allowed to use them. But very few boxers carry the beard. Surprisingly relaxed, actually, Ben. He's not steamed himself up and uh, flailing with punches as he's shown on a couple of occasions. Maybe because this Mumbao hasn't really bad mouthed him, as he puts it. Well, he shoots those punches fast over the top of the, the African's left lead there. That's been based in uh, France, though. He's boxed in Italy and France for a long time now. So oh, there he is, uh, holding him up for hope for the national newspaper photographer, especially the sponsor, The Sun. Here I say, Jim, he's looking relaxed to Ben, isn't he? He's taking his time, it would seem. He may not. One punch and I tweet a call will be wrong. Yeah, he's still putting power into the punches and hasn't caught him Bio cleanly yet. Bio's not a mover, he seems to be defending more than blocking. Ben's punches, and personally, I think that's a good idea because uh, no matter how fast you move, ben, Ben's going to catch you. So, Mbia seems to be trying to be pretty careful. He's managed to keep his chin down nice and low, which is another good idea. Ben is quite relaxed. He knows he has the power to take anybody out. He's not in any hurry to prove that again. Well, we're over the two-minute mark. That's quite an event now, isn't it, in a Ben fight? Well, they the first digs around the ribs now. Try to bring the guard down a bit. We're not hinging on the fight. Remember, the phenomenal payday coming up, Nigel Ben, against Michael Watson in London, May 21st. to hang his chin out too much now dropping his hands now that's a bit ridiculous can't do, do the macho bit you can lose a bit in the fight game doing that and fair, fair mark to Mbwayo who's getting the, the cheers from the Scottish crowd here saying uh, well this man at least is putting up a show well that's it time to get your breath back now that uh, a Nigel Ben opponent has actually had to cheat the fight back So now Brian Lynch and, uh, and Sam are going to say, what are you doing dropping your hands there? As the, the page three lady, Jackie Ward from uh, Scotland, walks past her to actually say, I got it, managed to get in the ring. We often wondered whether she would ever get in and carry the rounds two boards. Well, he hasn't changed his expression all the way through, Jim, quickly, though, as we get the rundown on Mumbao. 
Yeah, yeah, well, uh, he, he looks far more experienced than he actually is. He, he was never out of his depth. He, he tried, just tried to catch Ben's punches. He had some success in the first round. A little bit of careless right, work from go. Ben. At the early days. Had to check the stand between rounds in Mumbo. So into the second round then. And Arjun Ben at least knows uh, he's got an opponent willing to have a go. Whether his chin will stand up to Ben's power, we don't know. keep that guard nice and high there Mumbai oh, Jim as you were saying that's a smart thing to do and he's using the height too standing up straight yeah he's keeping his chin down so the punches from Ben which are getting through they're not catching him on the, the chin but uh, Ben looks as though he's trying to get all over in this round he's setting himself he's looking for the openings now yeah Ben Sorry, he might feel that he wants to try and get some work going to get ready for the Michael Watson fight, but that's always risky. You've got to take them out as quickly as you can, like Mike Tyson does. Yeah, well, Ben is putting the power into the punch. He just hasn't been able to catch him deal yet. Well, he's a cagey and an obstinate old customer, too, at 29, Mumbai. to mix punches with him there, Mumbai, and he came off second best. When Ben nails him, I tell you, the punch goes from chin to boots in a hurry there. And this won't go now. Now, this fella has put up a show until he got nailed, and the referee's got to wave him on now because there's no standing eight count in British boxing. But that's it. He won't get up from that. Right among the boxing board of control officials then. And yet again, Nigel Ben has done it in the second round. About two minutes and 15 seconds we make that. And Jim, very quickly, this fellow is to use boxing parlance. Didn't look exactly a mug at one time, did he? No, and Bill looked a half decent fighter, but uh, Ben has started putting power into the punches. And you know, as soon as one of those punches gets through from Ben, the, the, the power is there to take out anybody. And um, Bill still looks badly shaken at this moment. Only two opponents now in 22 fights have lasted longer, remember? The Mumbai out there, believe it or not. What a record this fella's got. Jim, the finish. Yeah, well, uh, Mumbai never really recovered uh, from that first punch. Uh, a very strong, very proud man, but when that first right hand caught him, uh, it was all over. He managed to get back up again twice, but uh, he was never in the fight. This man, Ben, I mean, he really paralyzes him with the punch power. There's no doubt about that. You, you wonder if he can do it at the top level. And Well, with that sort of power, Jim, there's no reason why he can't. Yeah, well, it looks to me as though he has the power to trouble any middleweight in the world, whether he'll hit the, the, the top boys yet. But I think that it's now time to move him up in class here. He's just doing it exactly as he likes here. But look at the power on that final punch. Jim, this is the first knockdown. Now, that was where he was fighting back from Wyo, and that was the mistake he made. Well, Ben was looking... Ben was putting power into the punches now, just looking for the opening and over it came, and as soon as the punch lands, the legs just buckle. Gentlemen, please, in two minutes, 20 seconds of round two, on the count out, the winner, Nigel, the Dart Destroyer, there. So a speech from Ben coming up. Hello, everyone. Well, I know the guy was, he's very cagey. Every time I threw a punch, his glove 
was up there all the time. So I thought Brian said, Nigel, he knows what you're gonna do. So what you gotta do is work yourself around the body, and then when the opening comes, then take it. And I caught, caught him with a couple of shots, but he rode them very well. But um, after, like I said before, okay, once they start getting through, they start telling. I mean, um, he, like they said, he didn't come here to hang about. He came here to fight as well. But I believe that I had too much ammunition for him. OK, let's take you through it. Your first chance to see it. Yeah. Let's have your comments on this. Well, well I had him pinned on the rope. I hurt him first of all. And, um, but he was still fighting back, so I know he was a bit live. But um, I was trying to catch him with the uppercuts because that was the kind of shot he's open. See, he was fighting back. So all credit to Juan Bale. But see, he left himself open. And then I thought, right, I'm going for it. He's very game here, isn't he? Or he's stupid, whichever well, way you look at it. No, I think very gamely. And the boxer, you know, they don't like to be counted out of being on a day. So a lot of respect goes out to him for, for getting up. But like... Um, he's not putting up any defence here, though, is he? No, he, he ain't hitting back because the first shot hurt him. And that's what, you know, he got up too soon. Were you surprised he got up again? No, I wanted him to get up. <laughs> no, um, because I believe, like, you know, um, he's, had, he's, he's been around for a long time. And um, I knew I had the ammunition to stop him. And everyone keeps writing me off as fighting nobody. So it's just like Michael Watson. Everyone's saying, what was the last person he fought? But I'm not here to slag him off. But the thing is about, I don't like people jumping on, you know, ready to slag me off. I go out there, I don't make the fights. I go out there and I do the business. Look at the turnout. Because they know when they come to see me, it's going to be explosive. If it's one minute, two minutes or 30 well, seconds, they're going to like That it. is the first time he's been knocked out. Why did you say you wanted him to get up again? Because I can, so I can knock him down again. Right. That's, you know, because um, that is what I believe. I want, I'm, I'm here to seek and destroy. And, you know, if a man goes down, I want it to get back up so I can hurt him again. Trying to look from a constructive point of view, because he, he did look a reasonable opponent tonight. Yeah. Are you not in your career now in need of a real big test that's going to take you quite a can few I, rounds? Can I say something, Joe? You see, you, you, you're, you're forgetting. How long have I been in the game? You see, I'm, I'm taking my time. I'm not here to rush for you or anybody. I'm here to come along steadily. I, I'm here to secure my kid's life, not to give yeah. everybody a good time. See, no, that, that's what it takes time. I'm not going to be rushing. Well, how much time, Nigel? Because we're all behind well, you and we're all one, impatient. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. Fist, really 15, get involved well, in a fight. 15 months. You know, I've got Watson the next fight, which I'm glad, glad to have. And then, you know, you've got the British title, the European title. Then we can solely concentrate on Americans. Now, I'm not going over there and fight Michael Nunn when I know I'm not ready. And, you know, you're hearing it from my mouth. I know I'm not ready for Michael Nunn. My punching power is there, but it's not just only punching power that counts. So, Mbayo stopped for the first time in his career, but at least he did last until the second round and number 22 there for Nigel Benn. After the break, it's Damien Denny in the battle of the unbeaten welterweights and our Mike Tyson competition in neutral corner. Join us for that. <laughs>